Hi, Trey. Um, I know you don't know me from Adam, but um, I am going to be giving an update to Monty, Judy, and um, Lauren. So I figured since you are going to be a part of their family that I would go ahead and update you on some things that I'm sure that you are not aware of, don't know about, or maybe we're told a different story about. Um, first off, I, I just want to say that uh, I've known the Holcombs for 30 years. Uh, we were very close years ago. <clears throat> I actually went to high school with, with Monty. And we all went to the same church together and we raised our children together. And I was actually there when Lauren was born. I was the only friend that Judy wanted while she was in labor. And the same with me. She was there when my daughter Jessica was born. So my daughter and Lauren are the same age. And um, they were in nursery together and all of our kids were just um, together. And we were very involved in church and I know the grandparents and we were all just very close at that time nothing ever happened there was no falling out or anything we just all kind of went separate ways I ended up getting a divorce 22 years after um, being married and um, anyway things were just great and fine my parents um, the only reason I'm bringing them up is because this has everything to do with them my parents retired from the Texas Baptist Children's Home. They had a beautiful, large house out in Granger in the country. And um, my dad um, took several mission trips a year to Mexico. He founded churches there. And um, Lauren was actually married to Christopher, who was the grandson of Brother Schobert, who, when I was a child, we went to his church. So was a small world how everything was intertwined um jumping forward uh hadn't seen or heard of the Holcombs in quite you know several years and uh one morning when my parents were going from Taylor on Granger to Round Rock to pick up toys for a uh, fundraiser and for a mission trip um, out of nowhere, a car came down off of the county road onto 79 and plowed into my parents, making them spin and hit an 18 wheeler. Um, and the reason I'm telling you this is because that person was Lauren Renee Holcomb. Uh, we didn't know this until later. Um, all I know is I got a call. My mom is severely injured. She had several fractures. Her face was fractured. I, um, The pictures that I'm sending you is proof of all this. Um, my dad was in shock. And we didn't know till weeks later who it was that actually caused the accident. But uh, now I know because... I have actually talked to Christopher. He's the only one that had been willing to talk to me. Um, that day, Lauren and Christopher had had an argument, had had a fight. She left the house with the daughter, uh, angry, upset, and went barreling down the road. Um, it's speculation. I don't know if she was trying to harm herself or if she was just being very reckless. But she caused a very bad accident on Highway 79. And um, immediately called Christopher. He picked her up. They were checked out. And they, they left the scene. They left the car there. They never filed a claim, a report, an accident, or anything. Um, from that day on, she just refused to talk about the accident. She refused to acknowledge the accident. She told several different stories to her mom, to her dad, to other people um, that were all false. And my mom was near death in the hospital. She had several fractures. She will never be able to walk again. Her 
her foot, her ankle had pins in it everywhere. She had open wounds. They had to remove half of her stomach, half of her small intestine, half of her large intestine, and half of her colon. Um, we had to sell their house. We had to move them into an assisted living. We spent three months in a hospital. And um, everybody kept asking, who, you know, who did this? Who, who's the person? And I finally said, let me see that. Let me look up the police report. And it had to have been a drunk driver. It had to have been somebody under the influence of drugs. You know, you just think the worst of a person. And when I got the police report, I looked down and it said, Lauren Renee. And I'm like, I mean, my heart just skipped a beat. Like, surely this cannot be Monty and Judy's daughter. Like, it's been years since I've seen her, but this is not an alcoholic, drug addict person. You know, this is a beautiful young woman who I adore her family. Well, to make a very long story short, and if you ever want to speak to me, just reach out to me. I'll be happy to talk to you about any of this. Um, I was advised by attorneys that I could reach out to Judy to try to talk to her and show her some of the evidence and some of the police report and all the things to try to get Lauren to do the right thing, which was confess about it. She did get a ticket. There was citations. They had the VIN number. Um, it took forever because like I said, she walked away from it and acted like it never happened. So she never filed anything. Um, my parents' hospital bills to this day are almost a million dollars. Uh, she never paid a dime. The insurance was under Christopher's name. So it paid very minimal. It didn't even pay, you know, a quarter of expenses and ongoing therapy that my mom has and um it's altered all of our lives and because of her injuries her health has continued to decline she had a heart attack two months ago um my daughter got married three weeks ago so we didn't even know if she was going to make it to the wedding um, and this morning she was admitted back into the hospital. We have since then had to cancel Thanksgiving again this year. Um, because she now has a blood clot in her lung and it's all due to the, the injury she sustained from this. Um, I don't. I've gone through therapy. I've gone through, I've, I've, I don't know how, well, I got a hold of Judy. She was immediately, hi, how are you doing? What's going on? I said, well, I need to talk to you about something serious. And then immediately she had her guard up. I don't want to talk to you about anything because Lauren and, and Christopher were already going through issues. She thought I was going to gossip about their marriage or tell her something she didn't want to know. I don't know. Um, I was basically coming to her as mom to mom because if it had been my daughter and I knew that she had accident, we know it was an accident, but it was a reckless, distracted accident and nobody was going after her. The only thing my parents have ever wanted from her was an apology, acknowledgement. I don't know. As her daughter, I would have... I would have surely had my daughter, if she had damaged Lauren's grandmother or caused this severity of an accident, my whole family would have been there with food, with the church, you know, support, with a GoFundMe, something, anything to help. And my family has gotten none of that. Monty and Judy have continued to cover for her since she was a teenager. They, they have seen my mom out in public in her wheelchair. And Judy practically up and ran out and almost left her granddaughter there because she was so. And my daughter saw her a couple of weeks ago. And again, these are people that 
we loved and trusted and thought we knew that their their character people who claim to love god and people but i don't know it just seems like you have to be in their little circle for them to care about you because there has been no reconciliation there has been no forgiveness um there has been no asking for forgiveness there has no been no repentance at all only lies and cover up um from day one so this is why i'm reaching out to you because at this time of the year during thanksgiving is when i really would like lauren to contemplate and think about what has happened to our family and what this has caused because you know her social media is just all about overcoming and i saw y'all's engagement video and you know it's beautiful it's beautiful and i i i hope that you are the type of man that will make her a better person um, I know she's very insecure and um, just doesn't live in reality most of the time. But, you know, and Christopher, her ex-husband, was the only one who actually, once I finally reached out to him, he was like, yes, absolutely, let's meet, let's talk. I don't, you know, I looked up Linda Martinez, that's my mother's name, who was severely injured. I tried to look her up. She's not on any social media. My mom is, you know, 79 years old. So um, I met with him. We spoke for hours. We cried together. He said, I take a part of the responsibility and the blame for this because we were not in a good place in our marriage. We were fighting that day. She left in anger. I picked her up, he said, but then that afternoon is when she actually left me and never wanted to talk about it. When the attorneys questioned her in a deposition, this is this was her response. I don't remember. I'm going through a horrible divorce and I just, I don't remember. And they told her to keep her mouth shut and that the Martinez's wouldn't be able to you know, get or sue or any of that, which they wouldn't. My parents are not those people. Their intent was never to sue, never to get any money from her. But it just breaks my heart that people that you once considered family and friends would treat other Christians this way with no regard to the change that they've made in someone else's life we've had to sell their home we've had to move them they cannot drive now my dad some days his his nerve pain in his legs is so bad he can't walk it's altered all of our lives it's taking it's drained us financially physically emotionally work I miss so much work and then of course the pandemic hit and then you know got hit again but we're overcomers and we are um closer as a family because of it if that could be the one positive thing out of all of this but my mother has wanted to die in the last three years so many times, I can't tell you, the woman is in constant pain. Constant pain. Constant stomach issues. Constant, just, she's not the same person. And so, I wish you well in your marriage. And I just thought you should know that the person that you're marrying and the family that you're marrying in and into will pretty much go to any lengths to keep their persona of the perfect little Christian family, do good for others until they hurt somebody. I don't know. I mean, 
that's all that we see on this side. I've reached out to I've reached out to Lauren. I've reached out to Judy. I've reached out to their pastors. I've reached out to anybody that would listen that that could bring reconciliation for both of our families, and they refuse to even acknowledge that Lauren even was the cause of the accident. And like I said, it was an accident. It wasn't malicious. She didn't go out. And when she left my mom laying there on the pavement bleeding to death, of course she didn't know it was my mom. You know? But once you do know that you just almost killed two people that are the parents of someone that you're supposed to well, anybody, it didn't matter if it was my parents, just anybody have some common decency to check on those people. What can I do? You know, apologize. We didn't get any of that. So happy Thanksgiving. I will be reaching out to the Holcombs as I do once a year to give them an update on my parents. And I just know that now that you're going to be part of the family, that you should know the story because I'm sure you'll get a di totally different story. But if you have any questions or, um, you know, need me to clarify anything, I'll be happy to, to do that. Thank you for your time.